three kilograms and standing 188 centimeters tall with a professional record of 26 wins two losses 14 by way of knockout from the uk michael Tyrell. Tyrell with baits in the corner and Jamie Bates his from the uk in the red corner weighing 88.4 kilograms and standing 193 centimeters tall with a professional record of 27 wins eight losses three draws seven by way of knockout he was the winner of the super combat tryouts in al Mare. from the netherlands patrick the beast van Rees. so a chance for van Rees to take the stage the after coming Marshall through in the Burson. talent finding super combat tryouts uh, Terrell at 31 years of age, a lot of experience, and he is a very useful fighter. Mind to head, mind to grow. Slight height to advantage to Terrell. Any elbows. Shake hands and back to your corner. So this should be a very Record, technical matchup. This is our first semi final in this cruiserweight division tournament. We've got participants from the UK, Holland, Spain, and of course Romania. This is Fight Club, and this is Super Combat. Now, as I said, Terrell, very, very skilled fighter. Nice moves, very subtle. Gets caught, though. But he's very relaxed. And Terrell, very, very slippery. He's getting caught with that right hand on the way in. That's the uppercut I told you about. Van Rees trying to impose himself early. Big right hand there from Terrell. Good work with the hands from Terrell. Had free range on the midsection of Van Rees. Van Rees has called the beast. And Reese turns Terrell. Tries uh, to impose himself on the ropes. So halfway through this first round, scheduled for three Super Combat K1 rules. Good hands there from Terrell and the knee strike to follow through. So Terrell starting to put a little bit more pressure on and definitely out punching Patrick Van Rees and these shots have got heat on them Terrell going to work here working the midsection and getting very good results from those hands and Van Rees has the look of a man he's just not registering what Terrell is bringing to this in so much as uh, it wasn't on Van Rees's schedule to come under this much pressure in the first round so under a minute left gets caught with that right hand Terrell as he moves back but uh, turns his man nicely puts in a couple of shots straight through the guard the hands of Terrell very very skillful and as I said he's got Jamie Bates his uh, not teammate but uh, Northeast of England, compadre and compatriot. And Bates, what a great, great performance he put in to win the last Super Combat World Grand Prix. So, some skills brought in by Van Rees. Well, I think uh, a round that uh, purported to be even, but actually, for my money, the better work was done by Michael Terrell.
from the tail of the tape, it looks as if uh, Patrick Van Rees is pressurizing Terrell, but actually the better work came from the Englishman. There's some calm words there from Jamie Bates. I have to say, these two Brit fighters have hit the scene and uh, what great talents they are. And it's something that's uh, long been contended, and that is that uh, there's a lot of great kickboxing and fight sport talent in the UK. And, uh, mixed martial arts sees the platform. Well patronized by British fighters. And of course, uh, full rules, Muay Thai. But, uh, not the uh, three times three round K1 format, which has long, long demanded some good British fighters arrive and uh, start to take some good victories. So the action, two minutes left, one minute gone. And Mickey Terrell, both fighters, in fact, Eased off the pressure here just a little. Good right hand straight through the guard from Terrell. The aggressor, definitely Patrick Van Rees. And it's interesting, good inside kick there from Terrell, inside thigh kick. I was going to say, it's interesting, they call Van Rees the beast, but we're not seeing that. In his performance here, and although the uh, kick which took Van Rees down, very effective, doesn't score under Super Combat K1 rules. But uh, Terrell now imposing himself and just showing Van Rees that uh, he can cause him problems. And uh, an old mate of mine, Fight. Gary Turner, when he did Fight. the odd sweep in a K1 bout, we all said, you know, what was the point of that? And he said, well, it takes a lot of effort to get back up again. So uh, method in Terrell's madness. Good big left hand there from Van Rees. Well, Terrell, fairly comfortable, in control here. Making Van Rees miss. Good work going downstairs, then up again. Well, just having fun here, Terrell. Unless he gets caught with something that comes right out of the blue from Van Rees, then uh, this will be a little cruise home. But he got tagged there, and again, Terrell leaves himself open when he puts power into the punches. Starting to blow a bit now. Michael Terrell. And uh, Jamie Bates is saying that uh, was lovely. Your boxing's great. And in fact, uh, it is. I don't think we're going to see a stoppage here from Terrell. I think uh, Van Rees still too tough. But he's had some good, good hits, Terrell. And certainly, I've got him up two rounds on my scorecard. So really controlling Mickey Terrell. Good takedown. Controls the leg and the knee as uh, Van Rees tries to get inside with that jumping knee. So the third and final round here in the first semi of our competition proper, this cruiserweight tournament coming to you from Constanta, Romania. It is, of course, live and it is, of course, super combat here on Fight Club.
with Van Rees now upping the ante here. Wait until my fight, yeah? Come. Fight! A touch of gloves as uh, Van Rees. Just a little eager after the referee said break. A little bit more purpose about the work from Van Rees, but he's being spoiled coming in. Terrell happy just to spoil him as he comes in on the inside. Turns his man nicely. Both fighters working the low kick. Van Rees has been the aggressor, but he's not been that creative. And then um, Terrell off the ropes there with that kick, front push. Just over a minute left, and again, the boxing skills of Terrell, far superior here. Van Rees really never got the kicks off. He's known as being uh, a good knee striker. And there's that uppercut that Terrell's known for. And Terrell at 31, starting to blow a bit. And it's interesting because uh, he's an electrician by trade. Oh, great drop kick, and that's got to be a count. I mean, that wasn't a, a trip or a sweep, it was a, a kick. So half a minute left and Van Rees has nothing to bring to the party here. Terrell knows that uh, he's got another bout after this and what a coup that would be for two British fighters to take two consecutive World Super Combat Grand Prix. And I'm holding and reserving judgment yet. But uh, while the English football team are on their way back from uh, the World Cup in Brazil, well, Jamie Bates and Mickey Terrell are out here in Romania winning Super Combat tournaments. Well, that was a third and final round. It's going to go to judges' scorecards. That's the potential of the knee strikes from Patrick Van Rees. And I don't think there was any ever doubt throughout the whole three rounds that Terrell wasn't behind the wheel on this. Let's get an official verdict on it. And the winner by unanimous decision from the UK, Michael Terrell. And he's done it, Terrell has done it, 31 years of age. Beaten the 25 year old. And he qualifies for the final, where he will take on the winner of the next bout, which will either be Moises Baute or Christian Ristia. And we're going for a quick commercial break. Join us after these messages. In the blue corner. 89.5 kilograms and standing 184 centimeters tall with a professional record of 10 wins three losses six by way of knockout ladies and gentlemen from spain moises Baldi. and his opponent in the red corner weighing 89 kilograms and standing 193 centimeters tall with a professional record of 22 wins five losses 11 by way of knockout ladies and gentlemen from romania christian the gladiator Riz 
Bestia! Well, you heard the support from Ristia. As I said, uh, one of Romania's famous fighting sons. Balte. Have his work cut out here. You know and, the rules. Um, I say stop, it's stop. Not only no in terms of the okay. skill that Ristia has, but also the crowd. Look at the height disadvantage Balte has. Judge. 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 Super combat referee, Cesar Giorgu, presiding. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds, super combat K1 rules. This is the second semi-final of our cruiserweight competition. Well, look at Baute, I told you the boxing skills were there. Heavy hands right from the get-go. So cruiserweight under 92 kilograms. And uh, this looks like it's going to be well, a tough night for Ristia. He's not used to uh, having to work this hard. Baute comes to this pretty much as an unknown, certainly new to super combat. But uh, a great boxing record. Ristia manages to land some shots, but uh, Baute is a boxer. And just look at the skills. On the inside, Baute in full control here. So three straight wins for Christian Ristia. Beat Christian Birohilka at the Super Combat World Grand Prix. And he beat Romano Romasco at the New Hero 7. Then back in 2013, Isidore Brunia. That was at the full fight. And uh, Moses Baute slips the overhand punches and comes up. Ristia, though, having to work hard. He's not used to this. High level of skill from Baute. Certainly as far as the hands are concerned. Great hands from Baute, and he's bringing in the knee strike and the kicks as well. Ristia in a little bit of trouble here. Takes a low shot, and look at the blood coming from the nose of Ristia. Let's just see. Well, yeah, you can't argue that. I think it was meant to go around the outside, but... Uh, that went straight up the middle and... Uh, unintentional, but... A uh, little bit tricksy. So with under a minute left to go, Christian Ria, Ristia on the uh, back end of... Some very good punches and very good work from Moses Baute. Well, four fights ago, Ristia lost against Fabian Gondorf. He's had losses against Ciprian Shopu and Alexandru Nedelku. It's interesting because he lost against Fabian Gondorf. That was a TKO. His loss against Cyprian Shopu was a decision, but the loss against Flavius Boychuk was a TKO. Now at the end of the first, been a tough three minutes for a man fighting out of the red corner, and that is Christian Ristia. I have to say, the Spaniard has come to this with some great, great boxing skills. Well, Baute definitely in control. And he has a very nice duck. Ristia used to hitting opponents that are standing in front of him. 
cannot contain Baute. Well, Baute, even the uppercut on the inside is having no effect because he's properly stopping anything and everything that comes out of the Christian Aristia boxing camp. So start of round two, Aristia doesn't have the boxing shield. First round, strong round, and definitely has to be given to Baute. Fights his way in, Baute, that front teep. Oh, gets caught with a big right hand there. Ristia about to turn the tables. Baute comes back strongly, though. And uh, Ristia will be buoyed by that, but just the skills, Baute. Continuous left-right combination. So the gum shield's gone. Just over two minutes left in this second round. This is very interesting because Ristia now knows he's got the work to do and uh, looks very much on for it. Baute just working solidly and consistently. And there's the duck. And he sees what Ristia has, sees it a mile off, gets underneath it comes back with his own work. Ristia looks like he's going to be outpointed here, halfway through this second round. That was a shocker, that big right hand earlier on, but uh, Baute goes back to work, and these are hurting Ristia now. Look at those scathing body shots, and he's downed his man! That's a down! Baute knew! Thundered in a shot to the midsection. And Ristia in seven kinds of trouble. And he shakes his head. And that's never a good sign. Not with a minute left in the second round in a three rounder. It's just going to be an absolute nightmare for Christian Ristia. And that's the second count. And basically, he's watching a horror movie that he's starring in. Well, that's the second knockdown in one round. Baute will finish this, I'm sure. Gum shield's gone. Very solid, hard punches from Moses Baute. Really, really good work. Unless Ristia can pull out a corker on the sweet spot. He's been well and truly worked over by Baute. And Baute, what a dark horse. What a dark horse. Absolutely annihilated Christian Brohilka in his last fight, Ristia. Then he KO'd Romano Romasco with that big right hook. But up against Baute here tonight, he really has a formidable opponent. Just look at Baute, go for the midsection, the kidneys, and uh, that floating rib shot. The floating rib, that's the gateway to pain. And Christian Aristia is driving right through it in a horse-drawn golden carriage.
Well, the slow-mo has just revealed. What an absolute crucible of pain this super combat ring is for Christian Ristia. Round three, third and final in the semi-final. Our second semi-final. Who will go on to fight Michael Terrell? Terrell won against Patrick Van Rees. Oh, reverse spinning back kick. He's got all the skills here, Baute. I like what he's got. He's properly working over Ristia. And Ristia's got nothing. Again, Baute working that shot to the kidneys. How much can Ristia take? Mr. Jurgu is about to step in. And uh, that's too much pain. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's not going to make the count. It's all over. TKO, what a great performance. What a great performance by this dark horse. Moses Baute absolutely took Christian Ristia apart here. That was a stunning performance. We had great hands, great knees, great kicks. Just look at how he took Ristia apart. Completely discombobulated. Ristia had nothing. Followed everything up. That's focus. I don't know how Michael Terrell's going to deal with this man. But Ristia didn't have the skill sets. Good work. And the winner by knockout in the third round from Spain, Moises Brauti. Well, Moses Bauti, he progresses on to the final. Take on Mickey Terrell of the UK. We're going for a short commercial break. Stay tuned to Super Combat, live here from Romania. And his opponent in the red corner, weighing 98.8 kilograms and standing 98 centimetres tall, with a professional record of 10 wins and two losses, five by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen from Romania, Dorin Robert! So this super fight, the first of our super fights, the first of three, the heavyweight division at 96 kilograms plus. Dorian Robert comes in at 98.8 keys. Shota Dolite comes in at 98 dead. Not much difference between these two okay, in terms of height. Just a couple of centimeters, but they're big hitters. And uh, they like to get involved and get rough. Back to your corner. Back to your corner. So scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Three people only Super combat K1 open. rules. The bottle off, the bottle off. Dorian Robert, of course, fights out of the Kotnari Scorpion Judge. gym. Judge. Trained by Mihai Constantine. Of course, the uh, coach of Raul Katinas. And uh, some of the top Romanian fighters. Not least of which is Catalin Morosanu. Well, these two boys are big hitters. Dorin Robert, known for powerful hooks, good uppercuts. Jumping double knee strike from Dolitz, the Georgian. Very upright, Roberts. Keeps that chin up. 
And that might uh, be a mistake here because uh, Dolitsa. You've got a big right hand, which he's not lazy in using. Red corner, three people. I see four. So some heat early on on the punches. Started off a bit raucous. Both fighters trying to assert themselves early doors. But uh, settled a pace now, and this super fight developing into well, a slightly more skillful affair. The he's a Gary, the knee strike from Shota Dolita becoming a feature, but good straight punches. And there's the uppercut that I told you. Dorin Robert has at his disposal. Oh, Robert starting to put some pressure on, moves forward. Dolitsa shakes his head, comes back with his own work. Well, Robert now really starting to impose himself. Round one coming to a close. Uh, Shota Dolly's starting to show some skills at the end of the round. But uh, this has been a tale in favor of Robert. Good, strong work, good, strong punches, a lot of leverage. I'm sure we're not seeing the best of Shota Dolitz's work. But they train them hard and they train them strong at the Kotnaris Scorpions. And that's the uh, nifty little slip. Look at that, Giyakazuki, straight textbook karate punch. Straight into the midsection. Not enough to worry. Dorin Robert. And as I say, Konstantin Mihai trains them tough and trains them hard. We've seen Dorian Robert before. Strong performer. Round two. And a KO merchant. Whether he's got enough to stop Dolite, I doubt very much. But he's certainly going to outbox his man here. Dolite. And the referee asserting himself. And uh, a gum shield found in the centre of the ring. I believe that might belong to Christian Ristiak from the last bout. Ristiak absolutely discombobulated by Moises Baute in the second semi-final of the cruiserweight element to tonight's proceedings. Good work from Dorian Robert. Robert just uh, managing to get some leverage into the shots. And it's made Dolice stand off here. Stand off and look for alternatives to getting involved. Robert now just wants a slugfest here. He's looking to put his man away. These are big shots going in. They're pretty accurate as well. Knee strike. 
Beautiful stuff. Great work from Dorian Roberts. I have to say, there's another gum shield there. Shota Dolitsa hasn't really introduced a lot of creativity here. Dorian Roberts, he's hardly Muhammad Ali with his work, but it's effective. Left right combinations, big hooks. Could out punch himself here. Under a minute left in the second, and Robert has thrown his best work. And Dalitza's still there. Neither of, these, neither of these boys are what I would call uh, exceptionally match fit. Well, Dolite looks to his corner. They're shouting out. I don't think he's got an answer here. But Robert has the look of a man who's thrown everything but the kitchen sink. Probably hasn't got a lot else. Tail of the tape. And it's been rubber all the way. Robert really trying to get in there and out hench Dolite. Just looking back again in slow motion, a lot of it actually. Won't score, it hasn't been on target. Dolice unperturbed by it all. Third and final round between these two. And Dolice starts off southpaw but goes to orthodox. Robert now, after punching himself out in the first and second round, has he got enough here? Dolice on his toes, looking for a little bit of a surprise here. Nice low kick there from the lead seat. Proper Kyokushin style. And up goes the high kick. Robert was looking down, and the delivery came in through the top window. Robert now looking decidedly jaded. The lead say does a faint in the jump. Robert uh, starting to slow down and puff and huff a little bit here. Crowd behind him. So far, it's been Robert on points. But the third and final round, Shota Dolitse, Dorin Robert, this heavyweight super fight being contested at plus 96 kilograms. But just halfway through, second element of this third round, third and final round. And um, Dorian Robert has punched absolutely relentlessly through the first and second round. Shota Dolice has taken the best that Robert's got to give. I have to say, it's a missed opportunity for Dolice. He's not capitalized on anything much. Under a minute left.
Well, there's no doubt that uh, Robert's done the majority of the work. It hasn't been quality. But then, compared to Dolice, who's brought absolutely nothing to the party. It's uh, probably going to end up as a relatively good night for Dorin Robert. Let's say try to spark up. But on the bell, the work rate goes to the red corner, Dorin Robert. And the corner saying, get back in there and put your hands up. But I think he's running east looking for a sunset. Tough customer, show to Dolitsa. But uh, the outlook was too singular. There was no creativity there. Just a final look at the slow-mo. Robert definitely running on fumes in that third round. I'm not surprised, threw a hell of a lot of punches. And there's the man himself, Catalin Morisano. From the... Ladies and gentlemen, the winner gym. by unanimous decision from Romania, Robert Dorin. Sorin Gobert. So the win goes to Dorin Robert. Wasn't spectacular, but a win's a win. And I've got no doubt Dolitze was a tough customer. Oh, with a professional record of five wins, zero losses, one by way of knockout. He was a former polo player and was the 2013 Waco amateur champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Romania, Christian Polo Spetku. Christian Spetku. And his opponent standing in the red corner, weighing 63.5 kilograms and standing 185 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 17 wins, three losses, 11 by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Netherlands, Paul the Hunter Jensen. Paul Jensen. So, no, the rules. Say stop, stop. No, please. 63.5 kilograms has been set for this lightweight bout. It's a super fight. Christian Spetku, we've seen before here on Fight Club. Very technical performer. Jansen, well, we don't know much about Jansen, but what we do know is he's trained by Robin van Rooshmalen. So this is set to be a real lively encounter. The height advantage, obviously, quite clearly with Jansen. Jansen comes in at uh, 185 centimetres, Spetku at 169. But Spetku, game, game operator and skillful, skillful fighter. He's going to have to get very, very busy. The height disadvantage at this weight and the speed holds the knee nicely left right combination from Spetku very dangerous Jansen early on Jansen tries to impose himself but just look at Spetku busier than a bishop's hat Good low kick. Spetku always very focused. Trained by Cipri and Sora. Good, good skills. 
Jensen tries the takedown. Good left hand. Comes in with an uppercut. Well, they're really mixing it up, these two. Spit coup, game on. The knee strike, very dangerous from Jansen. Just look at him work the midsection, Spit coup as well. Gets it back from Jansen. Overhand bombs from Spetku. And he lands them. Just the focus from Spetku. Unbelievable. Christian Spetku holds and strikes. You can do that under K1 rules. And he's really game on for this. And the high advantage of Jansen means absolutely nothing to Spetku. Takes a knee strike there, and you can't wear too many of those. Well, I don't know if that was a slip or a down. That was a slip. Spetku rolls in and out of those little tight positions. Just look at how he closes the gap and the distance. I mean, Jansen's got the range. He can hit him from right out there, but look at him. Spetku inside. Good touch of gloves, good sporting competition. What a great outing for these two. What a super, super fight. So a chance to revisit, and that's what Spetku does. A little bit of black ops. He comes in on the inside, causes problems under incredible pressure there from Jansen. Good work from Spetku. Second round of three in this lightweight super fight. Just look at that big right hand. Like a propeller. He's done his homework, Spetku, no doubt about this. You see a lot of fighters turn up and they roll out the same strategy against every fighter they meet and just hope some of it sticks. Spetku. I just looked at the height differential and said, right, what do I need to do against a big guy like this? And they've worked it, and they've worked it right. Little toughster right in there. Pocket dynamo giving it. Look at that, making inroads now, landing those shots. And Jansen, just the sheer work rate from Spetku. Turns his man on the ropes and works away. I mean, this is all about work. It's all about wanting to get in and get the job done. And Jansen has got the skills, but Spetku's got the will. So he's been holding Spetku and bringing the knee in, and that's a little bit of frustration. Spetku is almost like a mosquito in terms of what he's doing to Jansen. Oh, good front teep. 
Great front teeth from Jansen. Took Spetku down, but he's back up. And just look at the way he uses the ring. Spetku. A minute left, round two. Good right hand from Jansen. And Spetku now starting to run out of ideas. Just the work rate from Spetku. Okay. Well, the referee, Mr. Giorgu, having to break them there. Just look at that front teep. The kicks that uh, Jansen has. Paul Jansen is able to kick from way out there, but he's not doing anything to keep Spetku out. I mean, this is a gutsy performance. It really is. Spetku straight back in. Well, at the end of the second, at the end of the second round, that was an absolutely outstanding performance from uh, Christian Spetku. And there's the man himself, Robin van Ruschmalen. So a chance to revisit the tape. Just look at that work rate from Spec Coop. I mean, he is just a, a machine. It's relentless. It's relentless. Round three. So third and final round in our lightweight 63.5 kilogram super fight here at uh, the Super Combat in Constanta, Romania. Christian Spetku of Romania takes on Dutch fighter Paul Jansen. Jansen trained by Robin van Rooshmalen. Spetku has done his homework, put in a brilliant performance thus far. And uh, I think has run every round. Huge advantage in terms of height goes to Jansen. And Jansen has got skills. But Spetku has just come here to do business. Gum shields out. Not oh, for the first time in this bout. Spetku is getting hit, but he just charges in. Good uppercut. And again, Spetku closes the distance. How he does it, I don't know. He gets inside, causes all kinds of problems. Well, this is super combat, and you expect the unexpected. That wasn't unexpected. That's the second time Jansen has held and put the knee in. Well, just over half a minute left, and really, this has all been 
Spetku is under pressure here now. Jansen finishing quite strongly here, but he is using that technique of pulling the hand behind the head and pulling the head on. And that is a foul strike. He's been warned by the referee twice. Spetku's taken some pretty big shots as a result of that. But, uh, well, we're at the bell here. Good opportunity for an uppercut, but it was an opportunity lost. There's the bell. Well, in my book, that was a great performance from Spetku. I think he's done enough. And uh, whilst Jensen, good solid performer, the work rate from Spetku, what are you going to do? I think that's uh, a majority decision in favour of Spetku, and that's being d generous to Paul Jansen. I th just think Christian Spetku was just brilliant here in this matchup. So the official decision, just look at the height differential. And the winner by unanimous decision from the Netherlands, Paul the Hunter Jensen! Paul Jensen! Well, that's a decision I will never understand. I'll never understand that. But, uh, Ninety-four centimeters, and standing one hundred and ninety-four centimeters tall, with a professional record of twenty wins, two losses, and two draws, twelve by way of knockout. He was the two thousand and thirteen Super Combat finalist. Ladies and gentlemen, from Curaçao, D'Angelo, Pretty Boy, Marshall. From Curaçao, D'Angelo Marshall. Interestingly enough, lost the 2013 World Grand Prix to Frankie corner, Munoz. That was a night. Kilograms and standing 188 centimetres tall, with a professional record of 22 wins, five losses, 19 by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Belgium, Thomas Colos Van Este. Thomas so Van Este. Van Este. Interesting, D'Angelo Marshall's record, apart from that lost against Frankie Munoz at the Super Combat World Grand Prix 2013 final. Came off the back of nine straight wins. So, uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup. You both know the rules. Listen to my command. I don't think Van Este's got the skill set. Don't want to see any claims. But uh, these boys look as Thank if they've come to man. do business. Check this in. looks like a nice matchup. So our third Referee super fight Referee of the Marco evening. Burso. Angelo Marshall takes on Thomas Van Este. Judge, judge, judge. Time ready. Fight is ready. Fight. Round one. Scheduled for three. And, uh, well, the speed and power of Marshall and the accuracy is going to be what comes into play here already. There's a problem. Van Este got caught on the inside. He does bang hard, Marshall. There we go. I somehow sense that this might be the writing on the wall. Van Este getting hit straight through the middle. That left hand of Marshall just ramping in. Very focused, D'Angelo Marshall. And by that, I mean he comes with a lot of aggression. And Van Este got the hench, but he's getting his ears boxed here tonight.
So one down already, and uh, Van Estate really hasn't got a grip on this. He's such a vicious finisher, Marshall. And I've got a sneaky feeling this won't go to the judges. Well, slowly getting back into it, actually, Van Este now. Starting to warm up. And I think uh, that's more to do with D'Angelo Marshall just uh, stepping off the gas, really. <laughs> D'Angelo Marshall tries a big old looping high kick. He tries to set Van Este up for it. I mean, uh, that was uh, very slow in coming from D'Angelo Marshall, but he's looking for the big KO here, and he's setting Van Est up nicely. So the pace has settled. Coming to the end of the round. And as I say, I think that's more to do with D'Angelo Marshall stepping back, taking time out to have a look at what's going on. Van Estee's working away with the low kick. But the height disadvantage for Van Estee. Arguably, the deciding factor. It's at the end of round one. A horrendous start for Thomas Van Este. Took some really, really sharp punches on the inside. We get a chance to see what sent him to the mat. <laughs> Yeah, it was that cruncher on the forehead. Right on the forehead. I mean, that's just a testimony to how hard D'Angelo Marshall can bang. Well, he was in all sorts of trouble. Early doors, Van Este. Two of a scheduled three. Blue corner, one, one have to leave. Blue corner, one have to leave. Four people, only three. Referee laying down the law there. Blue corner's getting a bit crowded. Front row seats. So, round two, Thomas Van Estate takes on Angelo Marshall in this heavyweight. Super fight. No holding, no holding. Big, big proposition. Thomas Van Este. Blue corner, one people has to leave. One has to leave. Marshall banging those shots in. Really focused about that. And every time Van Este thinks about a strike, Marshall has got it covered. Tries to put the knee strike in. And that chin has tucked right down now. Van Este hiding that. Like the crown jewels. Doctor, 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 doctor
Well, Marshal D'Angelo has a tendency to do this, to take his foot off the gas and to just cruise a couple of rounds. It's almost like he's using it for sparring practice. Just over half a minute left in the second round. I think he could have worked harder. But uh, all the while chipping away at Van Este. Van Este's got no answer here tonight. And uh, this is agricultural work we're seeing from Thomas Van Este. You know, and by that, I mean he's hardly Peter Ertz. So, third and final round, and without a doubt, the work has been done by D'Angelo Marshall throughout this. And it's just really been like a sparring session for D'Angelo Marshall. Testimony to Thomas Van Este. He's been banged and he's been banged hard by D'Angelo Marshall. Marshall has tried to set him up for a nice definitive takeout. A couple of times got the high kick up. Couldn't do it. But it's a big rethink for Thomas Van Este. Okay, seconds up. Milton Felter. From the slam gym. Just straightening out. Marshall for the last round. Third and last round. Troisième and final round. Shake hands. Third and final round. D'Angelo Marshall in the blue corner. Thomas Van Este in the red. Van Este from Belgium. Marshall. Fighting out of the weather, Netherlands by way of Curaçao. Or fighting out of Curaçao by way of the Netherlands. There's no two ways about it. Skill sets light with Marshall. And, uh, I think he could have finished this earlier on. But he's decided to uh, go the distance. A minute gone in this third and final round. And it purported to be an absolute corker of a matchup. Van Este certainly has the hench and the power. But the skill and the power rests with the man fighting out of the blue corner, D'Angelo Marshall. All right, we're starting to see the pressure ramp up now. Marshall fancies it now. Van Este's done very well to keep out of trouble, he really has. It's under a minute left now. Marshall happy just the way to bang in the shots.
So the clock ticks down. And Van Este in all kinds of trouble. He's really been given a boxing lesson here today. Cool, calm, and collected. D'Angelo Marshall shakes his head. I think he was looking for a finish, but it's been a consistent, consistent work rate that uh, outboxed his opponent. Chance to view the, uh, the slow-mo. Good work from Marshall. And he just kept banging that left hand in at will. Van Este really didn't have an answer. Didn't have a guard. Didn't have anything to attack with. And I think he was really rocked at the power that Marshall had at his disposal. An uncommon set of attributes Angelo Marshall has at his disposal. The speed and the power for a man that size. Go on, red corner, Rouge. So We wait for the official Ladies verdict. And gentlemen, the winner by unanimous decision from Curaçao, D'Angelo, pretty boy, Marshall. The trophy is presented by Bogdan Popovich of Bograve Luxury and Alex. So the win goes to Marshall. No surprises there. We knew that was coming. Good effort from both men. Seven losses and five draws, 25 by way of knockout. He is the official challenger, ladies and gentlemen, from Turkey, Ali the Tornado Cherny. From Turkey, Ali Cernik. And his opponent standing in the red corner, weighing 91.9 kilograms and standing 188 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 32 wins, six losses, 21 by way of knockout. He's the reigning super combat, super cruiserweight champion, and he'll be defending his title tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, from Romania, Andre Stoiker. So defending this title, Stoika from Bucharest. Do you know the rules? I say stop, it's stop. No clinch, no elbow, okay? The original fighter that was supposed to be taking on Stoika for this was a Jamaican fighter, Horace Bad Boy Martin. He couldn't honor the match. Ali Chenik has stepped in. 27 years old, Chenik, 18, 8, and 2. Known as a powerful hitter. 11 of his wins were obtained before the final bell. And in the past two years, Chenik, who trains at Siam Gym, managed to defeat Alexei Ignashov, one of my favorite stand up fighters of all time. Sergev Mazlobjev and Roman Klebel. So I said, Chenik has an impressive record. Well, 32 wins from a 38, a possible 38. Andre Stoika became the Super Combat World Champion in December 2013 after he caused Andre Hutnik's first defeat in five years. 
He's not going to want to hand this over lightly. I think the big step up for Stoika was when he signed to glory. He used to roam the range. He was known as Mr. KO. But that's how he does it, that right. Then the left. Chenik got hurt by that. Chenik doesn't look in great shape to me. Ooh, the right hand and then the left hook. Goes into the midsection. He's a, he's, 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 he's a stoika. What can I tell you? He's a bit of a mixed bag. You've got two fighters here, one that's absolutely pants, and then one that comes and really does the business. Very aggressive, good finisher. I don't think Chenik stands much of a chance of taking the belt tonight, I will say that. He just doesn't look in shape. There's too much movement around the midsection, and Stoika fighting for glory. Will want to tuck this one away. He's going to be very purposeful. And I have to say, Ali Chenik just looks like a bloke from down the pub, really. Impressive record, Chenik, but uh, in the interim, he's had some pies. Well, the clock ticks down, the end of the first round. The better work has come from Stoika. But Chenik is tough. I just don't think he's got the uh, conditioning he needs. And there's uh, another fighter out of the respect gym. Benjamin Adik Bouye. That said, Chenik has brought the action. And I don't know, you know, Chenik might turn out to be like Gokan Sake. I always sort of was very, very scathing about the conditioning of uh, Gokan Sake in that I thought he just looked like an ordinary bloke, but uh, maybe Chenik's got something here. But Stoika has got to hold it down. Suffered a huge defeat in the tournament reserve bout at Glory 15. That was in Istanbul, Turkey. He was uh, stopped by Danio Ilunga. Ilunga KO'd him. Well, Stoika now starting to up the ante and put the pressure on. He's a very aggressive fighter and he's come out here now to really impose himself on Ali Chenik. But Chenik, well, still in there, still mixing it up. Stoika looking to finish. Up goes the high kick, then the hands. Chenik in trouble now against the ropes. Slips a lot of what Stoika brings to this. Stoika needs to be on target. Good left hand. And that made Ali Chenik's hair hurt, but he's still there. Interestingly enough, Chenik also lost to Danio Ilunga. But well, that was by a decision. Beat Alexei Ignashov. That was in Budapest. But uh, it has to be said. Alexei now, well, hardly the man he was. 
Chenick now just realising how fierce Stoika can be. Almost a psychotic approach to his work here. Just stands off and smiles. But then the face goes and the red mist comes down and then he starts to bang them out. And the crowd love this. Just over a minute left. Second round. And Ali Chenik is in for a hard night. That was a crisp left shot from Chenik. Chenik's still there. Chenik fancies the belt. It's a long way to come for a short fight. And Stoika just much more considered about his work. Good hit from Stoika. Left right there, jarred the head back of Chenik. Funnily enough, uh, Chenik's had an outing with uh, Horace Martin. And he lost. So I don't know what that means in today's money. Whether or not Stoika would have had a tougher night against Martin. But he's definitely not frightened of taking on a challenge because he certainly got that here with Ali Chenik. Well, I started off by saying he didn't look as if he was in great condition, but I think Ali Chenik is so tough. He's one of these fighters like Gokan Saki. They just don't look anything. They're not cut, there's no six pack. Just look at Stoika, he's banging in with some of his best shots. But 93.4 keys is the uh, official weighing weight for Ali Chenik and 91.9 for Stoika. But Stoika looking cut. And he's got the leverage in those shots. He's in close, banging them in. Chenik in all kinds of trouble. Just towards the end of the second round there. So the third and final round in this title clash for the Super Cruiserweight title, the Super Combat Super Cruiserweight title, pitching in the blue corner, Ali Chenik, and in the red corner, the incumbent Super Cruiserweight champion, Andre Stoika. And the Stoika outboxes him, puts the left hook in. Good high kicks from both legs. So the pace has eased off. I think Stoika wants a big finish here, so he's just standing off. I don't think he can do it though. Chenik's not the kind of fighter that's going to take the hit and go down, but he could do. And I think Stoika's playing into his hands by easing off the pressure. As I said, I don't think Chenik was match fit before he started. Whether or not Stoika can take the judges out of the equation. Well, we've got one minute 42 to see if that's possible. Well, Chenik slowly getting back into this. He's got his second wind. And I said, I think that was a mistake from Stoika. And Stoika needs to have a care, you know, because Chenik can bang if he can land the shot.
Well, the clock ticks down. Stoika took his foot off the gas. I think he allowed Chenik to get in. He's got 20-odd uh, seconds here for a strong finish. He's really banged Chenik a few times. There's no doubt that uh, Chenik's a worthy opponent. But Stoika couldn't finish him. Something in the third round took the aggression out of Stoika's work. Clock's ticked down. There's no doubt that he'll retain the belt. But he may not be 100% happy with that performance. But that was a real battle between those two. And look at Benjamin Eddie Bouye tower over the two of them. And interestingly enough, that was a surprising matchup for Bog Bogdan, I was going to say, for Andre Stoika. Interesting, his brother's not in the corner with him, normally is Bogdan. But, uh, well, he's a tough opponent, Chenik. Didn't look to me to be in great shape. But certainly put in a good performance here. Trained by Mickey Benazuz. Chenik. Let's wait for the official verdict. I've no doubt that uh, Stoikas retained the title. But let's see, see how the judges saw it. And I mean, uh, anything could happen here. We only have to look at the uh, Christian Spetku, Paul Jansen decision earlier on. So... Uh, tentative moments ladies and gentlemen after three hard-fought rounds the fight goes to the judges scorecards the first judge scores the fight 29 30 second judge scores the fight 27 30 and the third judge scores the fight 27 30 for winner by unanimous decision and still the reigning champion from Romania, Andre Stoika! So Stoika keeps the crown. Stoika! Unanimous decision across the board. 29-30, I thought that was very close. 27-30, 27-30, that would be about right. The trophy is presented by Christian Oan from Black Tie and Christian Ioana. So Chenik stepped in after Horace Boy Martin couldn't make it and a win for Stoika nonetheless. Welcome back, Fight Club here at the Super Combat Grand Prix, coming to you live from Constanta, Romania. Well, the final in the competition proper, up, Michael Terrell takes on Moises Baute. First to the ring, from the UK, Michael Terrell! Well, we know what Michael Terrell can do. Took a very comfortable win over Patrick Van Rees of the Netherlands. From the UK, Terrell. North Shields, the northeast of England. He's 187 centimetres, 83.9 keys. Mutai stylist. Will he make and this opponent, a second consecutive win for a British fighter? Well, this was the big shock of the evening, I have to say. Christian Ristia was absolutely discombobulated by Moses Baute. Baute from Tenerife. 29 years of age. A boxer. Well, I say a boxer, he said... Uh, a good pedigree in boxing.
in the blue corner, weighing 89.3 kilograms and standing 188 centimetres tall, with a professional record of 27 wins, two losses, 14 by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from the UK, Michael Tyrrell. From the UK, Michael Tyrrell. And his opponent in the red corner, weighing 89.5 kilograms and standing 184 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 11 wins and three losses, six by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Spain, Moises Bauti. From Spain, Moises Bauti. So Moises Bauti from Spain and he's going to be a tough proposition for Mickey Terrell. I have to say this is not going to be a walk in the park. Terrell's got a good skill set but he's not a big hitter. If he catches Bauté right he could cause problems but I think this is going to be tough. So for the final of the cruiserweight competition Coming to you live from the Sports Hall, Constanta, Romania. Michael Terrell of England takes on Moises Baute. Baute absolutely took up part Christian Ristia. How he'll fare here tonight against Terrell. I don't know, as I say, Terrell's got the skill set. He's a real class act. But Baute can bang hard. He's relentless and he works already. Baute looking to make inroads. And a slip there from Tyrell. Turned his man nicely, and it was Baute's turn to slip. Very careful fighter, Tyrell. Calm. He knows he's got to do damage front end. Mickey Tyrell. And he's on for it. Just look at it. Baute try to get in on the inside off the back of the kick. Terriel gets the kick up. Makes him man miss. And that's unusual for Baute. Christian Ristia was on the receiving end of all of that. And as I said, he's careful. Terriel, he doesn't. Rush in where fools fear to tread. Baute now having a little bit of a wake-up call here. Break! Break! Break your stuff. Jamie Bates. Won the last Grand Prix. The first UK fighter to do so. His compatriot, Mickey Terrell. Can he make this a double whammy? Two consecutive Super Combat Grand Prix wins. Good right hand through the middle. Oh, Terrell's on this. Well, Baute might have met his match here. Terrell standing up and out, boxing his man. Turns the leg out for the kick. Baute marching into the shots and Terrell picking him off. There's no doubt about it, Baute's a slugger. He can get inside and cause damage. But Terrell, beautifully composed. And I have to say, between him and James Bates, they've really put UK stand up on the map in this part of Europe and he was hurt by that Mickey Terrell they're allowing Terrell the chance to uh, recover but he was hurt by that shot and he's to keep his wits about him Terrell And second clapper, what a corker of a first round this has been. Baute is a tough proposition. Terrell, though. Well, Terrell has got Baute worked out because he's very frustrated. Let's see what Jamie Bates will say in terms of encouragement. Always calm. Good advice. He's trained by his dad. Jamie Bates, and it's lovely to see 
class act, put in such a great performance in the last Super Combat. He was so overjoyed to win. But just look at Terrell using all the tricks, really making Baute work. Just slightly off with the shots. Terrell, he's a good, good opponent. He doesn't like that, Baute. And there were the missed opportunities, and that shows you what a good boxer Moises Baute is. Listen good, eh? Time! Fight! Round two. Two of a scheduled three. This is the final of the Super Combat World Grand Prix Cruiserweight Tournament. It's coming to you live from the Sports Hall on the seaside. Constanta, Romania. What a night we've had. Super, super fights. Shota Delitze against Dorian Robert. Robert took the win on a decision. Christian Speck took... Well, he put in a gutsy performance, but the decision went to Paul Jensen of the Netherlands. Then D'Angelo Marshall against Thomas Van Est. Van Est, the fridge. Angelo Marshall, well, a fridge in his own way, as cool as ice. Then Ali Chenik came to contend Andre Stoika's Super Cruiserweight title. Came to do business, but didn't do enough work. And Stoika retained the crown. This is the final. Mickey Tyrell putting in a class performance here against a tough, tough opponent. Moises Baute. And I think Tyrell is doing good work. He's out pointing his man. And Baute not having it his own way. He's really, really struggling to get. Mickey Tyrell of the UK in the crosshairs. Terrell taking some shots here, but he's tough and he's slippery. Terrell, 31 years of age. That left hand bangs straight in. Baute now starting to work the low kick. There's the kidney punch and he's hurting Terrell here. Terrell times the second shot in. This is a real war of attrition between these two. Baute just comes forward and he hurts. And Tyrell starting to take those shots on the kidneys. That's how Moises Baute finished off. Christian Ristia working to the kidneys. And Tyrell in trouble. Tyrell in trouble. The work rate slowed down. He can't afford to do that. No hit. Baute really putting effort into this. Tyrell standing off and trying to pick the shot. Baute getting hit there and having to rethink. You can almost see the mind whirring. Last time. Next time we get down. Okay? Fight! The referee right there to stop Baute. He's just bullying Tyrell against the ropes, putting the head in. Ten second clap has gone. Tyrell will survive the round. But he needs to rethink. And the high kick goes up. And Terrell sacrificed that high kick for a sweep that doesn't count. Better round for Baute. I've got it at one apiece. Well, this is where he's got to dig deep. And this is where cornerman Jamie Bates, brilliant fighter and brilliant tactician here himself, Chance to revisit the slow mo. Much better round, much stronger round for Baute. Shake hands, final round. Okay. 
Time. Fight! Round three, final round. Third and final round in the final of the Cruiserweight tournament. Mickey Terrell of the UK takes on Moises Baute of Spain. Out of the two fighters, Baute's had the less ring time. Took out Christian Ristia in the second. Tyrell went the distance with Patrick Van Rees, and he's getting hurt here, Tyrell, because of the relentless attrition. And he's done it! And there's the count, Mickey Tyrell. Two, three. It's the kidney shot. Five, six, Just under okay. the rib cage. Oh, what a shame. Mickey Tyrell was doing so well. Now, Mickey Tyrell needs to finish this. And you can hear the corner. Terrell needs to dig deep. He can do this. Tries to roll away from Bout. He tries to turn his man. But this is just ridiculous from Moses Bout. One minute 40. Can he do this now? It's that shot there, that right hand. And Terrell's gone down again. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, hands. Five. Well, Terrell stretches it out, but the writing's on the wall now. And unless he can drop Baute, Baute thundering that right hand into the floating rib. And the look of pain on Terrell's face. He's really got to bring something up here. They're calling for a knee up the middle. But Terrell's got nothing left to give. Baute has done it again. The body shot's relentless. That's three. Terrell in all kinds of trouble here. And that's it. He cannot continue. And what a shame for Mickey Terrell. But what a performance from Moises Baute. Rocky Marciano said, kill the body and the head will fall. And Baute has dashed the hopes of this man, Mickey Tyrell. And uh, Baute doing what he does best. And I have to say, stopped both his opponents within the distance. And both his opponents were useful performers, especially this man, Mickey Terrell, a lot of skills, but just look at those body shots. They are punishing. And Terrell just could not operate. So, unless Terrell could remove the judges from the equation, the win was gonna go to Moises Baute of Spain. Would have been nice to have had two English wins of the World Grand Prix tournament on the trot. But uh, it's not to be. Nevertheless, skillful and, and brave performance from Terrell. The World Grand Prix by knockout in the third round from Spain, Moises Baute. The winner is uh, Moises Baute. He has moved on to the final elimination. So Baute goes on to the final elimination, and that will be uh, an interesting evening. We'll be bringing that to you, of course, here on Fight Club. So a winner by TKO, Moses Baute. So we're going to go and have a few words with Baute, get his take on the win and his performance, indeed, throughout the tournament itself. Congratulations, uh, Moses. You are, you, you, 
You are the, the a Grand Prix champion. How do you feel? What do you think about this? Muy contento. Quería dar las gracias a la organización por confiar en mí. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to uh, the organization, and uh, it's very happy to win this uh, championship. I'm very happy too for you, and uh, I hope to see you for uh, the, the final elimination. Now you are qualified for the final elimination. Seguiremos entrenando para lograrlo y llevarnos el título para casa, claro que sí. He's training so much, and he's very happy. Congratulations. I'll see you for the next one. Gracias, eh. Gracias, too. So, uh, it's over here. Upcoming, <laughs> coming up is going to be the agenda. I hope you enjoy it. Until then, stay out from trouble. Don't forget this. Never go for trouble. See you for the next one. Bye-bye. Well, the next fight club is the Kabala Fight Series 1 from Baku, Azerbaijan. That's on July the 17th at 2100 hours CET. Then we've got Glory 17 from Los Angeles at 2000 hours CET on July 24th. I've been Sensei Will Vanders. Till the next time, as Sam says, keep out of trouble. Look after yourselves and each other. Us. Watch, I will play you with strike. Hit all these suckers off with my ball.